All right. So welcome, welcome everybody. Happy Wednesday. That is the day that it is. Um, my thought for you today is uh, this little poem thing showed up on one of my uh, social media feeds. Um, I'm rarely on them, but this showed up again. And so when things show up multiple times, I start to pay attention. Um, but what I like about it is that, and I'm, I'm going to read it to you, but what I like about it is that it gives us this sort of understanding about this inner dialogue that we have, right? And most of us go about our lives trying to make the outer dialogue look the way that we want it to. And that inner dialogue is just this sort of quiet enemy that we have, right? So it's the little place that we go home and fight in <laughs> every day when we're not being the best person we can be on the outside, right? And yoga is really ultimately about being able to be the most complete person that you can be on the inside and letting that outside extend from there. But most of us do it the other way is we try to be the exact best person we can be outside while inside is maybe falling apart, right? And so the dialogue that we have internally, if we listen to it on one level, then we might seem like we're always stuck in the same conversation, nothing ever changes. But this poem, as I read it to you, gives us the kind of opportunity to realize that that dialogue, when we really listen to it, not as the repetitive, this is what I say to myself day after day after day, but when we actually listen to the feelings that are behind it, or we start to listen to the reality that we are painting with those words, is then there's something that we can do when we realize that we're the ones still holding the paintbrush. We're the ones that still have the pen in our hands. And that there's a way to, to write these dialogue words or to write these feelings in a way where they don't have to be different than they are, but they can mean something other than what our mind keeps repeating, right? So come to a comfortable seat, let your eyes close. I will read you the poem, but I want you to come into your breath first. And to feel your breath as it actually is. So acknowledge or pay attention to where the sensation is, where the breath enters through the nostrils. And feel that on the inhale and on the exhale. And then just relax into this moment. And this moment might be one that is not easeful. It might be one that still is carrying the adrenaline of the day. might still be carrying the emotions of yesterday, the dream you had this morning, last night, the hopes, the disappointments. So you're feeling the breath flow in and the breath flow out, just feel all of that as though it is fluid. So it's a constantly flowing energy in and out. So then even if you are unconsciously doing so, let your belly go. Even if you are unconsciously holding it, let your butt go. And relax your fingers. Let your shoulders hang your jaw relax and breathe in this state of not trying to hold yourself up and just being willing to feel what's there. So much of the way our spiritual teachings are presented is often the mind interprets it as this is here so that I can change. This is here so that I can fix this voice, I can fix that, fix this. And the teachings are ultimately about learning to accept what you really are and not to be confused by what that inner dialogue might seem to be saying in a moment. So our greatest challenge is to learn how to relax. So 
take one more full breath in. And exhaling all the way out. Bring the hands together in front of the heart center, palm to palm. And we'll open with the sound of Om. Take a deep breath in. And let the eyes float open. Nice, you guys. You can release your hands, please, and then come forward onto hands and knees. I just want you to watch as you practice how much you actively insert ideas into your head as you're practicing. So start to cat and cow, fingers nice and wide as you inhale, lengthen the spine, as you exhale, curl and round. You know, how often that inner dialogue is going on. And even in the moment of you feeling something, your mind is immediately saying, don't feel it that way. Don't feel that. How about we say it's this instead? How about we turn it into that? Can we pretend we didn't feel that? All right, so just watching how much the mind starts to try and interpret your experience for you so that it fits into what the mind considers to be a good experience a less painful experience, a less real experience. You say that this entire external world, they call it Maya in the yogic text, which means illusion, it means an overlay. That to be able to be the master of Maya or to be beyond that means that you see the truth of things, even though the illusion still exists. used to be a saying, and I don't know who it's credited for, but the idea that when you start, you know, practicing, when you start looking at the world through spiritual eyes is that, you know, the tree is just a tree. And then you get deep into the teachings and you're like, oh my God, a tree is not just a tree. It's this majestic, like, you know, example of prana and it means this and it means that and everything means everything. It gets so complicated. And then you get a little deeper into practice and suddenly a tree just becomes a tree again. And that's what we're looking for is that moment where the mind relaxes around its attempt to make things into something. What we're looking for is where's the quiet in that inner dialogue? Are you tired of cat cow yet? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do it two more breaths. <laughs> Good. And then come back to stillness, please. Nice job. Tuck your toes, lift your hips, come into downward facing dog. Good, bend your knees a lot. So bend your knees so that they almost just hover above the floor if you can. So take them as low as you can up on the balls of your feet. Drop your knees low, 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 like an inch above the floor. And then pull your hips back towards your heels. So almost like you're trying to do child's pose, but your knees are just above the floor. Good, so really pull back. Scoop into your low belly. So it's like you're folding through your lower waist. Bend those knees real deep, you guys, as deep as you can. Good. And then start to scoop that belly even more, lift your hips high to the sky, straightening the legs, letting your heels reach towards the floor, but don't push them towards the floor. Good. And then step the right foot forward between the hands, please lunge. Good, take both hands inside the front foot, walk to your left until you come to the center of your mat, Prasarita Padottanasana, turn your feet. Good. And then again, bend both knees. As your knees bend, press your inner knees wide, your inner thighs wide. Good. Feel the baby toe edges of your feet root down to the floor. Feel your inner arches squeeze up. So feel almost like you're trying to pull the balls of your feet and your heels towards each other. You're trying to like squeeze your feet. Good. Nice, you guys. And then let your weight move towards the balls of your feet a little bit more. Your hips move forward. Nice. And now from your navel again, start to press your hips up towards the sky, press down into your heels to let your legs to come to their appropriate amount of straight. So the moment you feel your knees lock, like there's nowhere else to go, you've gone too far. Even a completely straight leg should not feel locked. So press into your feet, pull up through your sacrum. Nice, good. And then start to walk your belly towards your right thigh, please. Turning at the waist, keep your left hip nice and wide. So don't let your left hip turn with you. 
You gotta keep that feeling of the weight moving towards the balls of the feet. Pressing through your heels. Good, walk back towards center, please. And then start to walk over towards the left leg, turning your belly towards the left thigh. Keep your right inner thigh pulling wide, right hip pulling back and wide. Yeah. Nice, you guys. Good, walk yourself back towards center, please. Nice, turn your right toes out to 45 degrees. Bend your knee so that knee tracks towards the second toe. If your foot is wider than that, move your toes so that they are angled in line with your knee. <laughs> Press that inner knee nice and wide. Keep your hands in front of you. Don't walk your hands to the right. Keep them right center. Good, scoop into your low belly, curl and round into your back and then let that tailbone drop towards the floor. So it's like you're rotating your tail down. Good, and then let that right knee widen even more. Drop your seat just a little bit more as you lift your chest. You got it, Aparna, perfect, right where you are. Good, nice, you guys. And then go ahead, straighten that leg, turn your right toes forward again. Good, second side, turn your left toes out 45 degrees, bend the left knee. And if your foot is wider, it's turned out more than what your knee can do. If your knee is not tracking along your second or third toe, turn your foot in more until it tracks with where your knee can go. Widen your inner knee. Good, scoop into your low belly. Don't walk your hands to the left, keep them center. Start to drop your tail, like you're actually curling your tail under, dropping it down and lift your hip points from the front up. Good, lift your chest just a little bit higher, drop down through your pelvis, let that knee go a little deeper. You got it, nice chest. Good, and then come all the way back to center, please. Turn those left toes forward again. Excellent. Walk towards the top of your mat, please. Turn your right toes forward. Step both feet to the top of the mat. Standing forward fold. Good. Grab a block if you have a block. Place the block between the upper thighs. Good. Narrow setting between the upper thighs. Good. And then make sure your hands can touch something. So if you need a block or two blocks underneath your hands as well, <laughs> see how many blocks you have at home. Good, make sure your hands can touch something. So hug that block with the inner thighs. Good, and then come up on the balls of your feet. Uh-huh, so you give a little squeeze there. Good, scoop your belly, press your butt towards the sky. Nice, and now drop your heels towards the floor. So come back to equal feet, bend your knees, keep your hands on the floor like you're coming into chair. So bend the knees a lot, take your butt back into chair, keep hugging the block. Good, scoop into your low belly, please. And then stretch your arms up alongside your ears, full chair pose with the block. Good. And then come all the way up to stand. Good, without pushing your pelvis forward. So keep the tops of the thighs moving back. Nice, don't lock your knees back, shins forward. There you go. Now come up on the balls of your feet standing, reach up through the sides of the waist, up onto the balls of your feet, hug that block. Good, tops of the thighs back. Nice. Now let your heels drop back down to the floor. Good, bend your knees again, dropping back into chair. Good, nice, folding from those thigh creases, pull your butt back, you got it, Lynn. And then release the hands down to the floor or your blocks. Good, start to straighten the legs again without locking the knees, weight towards the balls of your feet. Come up on the balls of your feet, lift your heels. Good, squeeze everything up into your lower belly. So suck up through that inner edge of the legs, hug. Good, and then release the heels down to the floor. Bend your knees again, back into chair with the hands on the floor. Good, scoop the belly because I want your butt to go way back first. Nice, now stretch the arms up alongside your ears without letting everything fall forward. Knees stay where they are, arms all the way up, all the way up, all the way up. Good, come all the way up to stand, pressing through your heels, not letting the tops of the thighs pop forward. Pull up through your low belly instead. Good, now rise up onto the balls of your feet, pull your heels up off the floor, tippy toes. Good, pull your low rib cage in and up. Nice. And then let your heels come back down to the floor. Bend your knees back into chair one more time. Good, pause there. Knees should not be forward of your ankles. If you look down and can't see your toes, move your knees back. Even if that means you have to drop your waist a little bit. Good, I say your knees shouldn't be forward of your ankles. If they are, it's okay, but you want the butt moving back. Good, stay in chair, take your hands back behind you, interlace your fingers at the low spine. Good, shrug your shoulders up, hug the upper arms, feel the back start to squeeze behind the heart. And then take your butt to the sky, drop your head forward fold, stretching the arms up and over any amount. Keep pressing through all four corners of your feet and find your arches again. So give that little bit of a squeeze of the ball of your foot and your heel towards each other. 
Good, soften your knees so the weight of your hips move slightly forward and then let's gravity draw your spine longer. Nice, release the hands down to the floor. Excellent, place the block to the side. Good, plant the hands, step or jump yourself back to plank. Excellent, lower down slow to your belly. Good, rise up cobra, lift head, neck and chest. Good, and then exhale, please, back to downward facing dog, tuck the toes, lift the hips. What's your inner dialogue looking like? What? I said, what's your inner dialogue looking like? She's so mean. <laughs> She's so mean. The inner dialogue, I know. I know. There's a lot of commentary in there. Stretch your right leg up and back behind you, down dog split. The thing is, is that we then try to hide from that meanness as though it's not a part of us. <laughs> Instead of looking at what is the meanness trying to protect, right? Bend the knee, kick your heel in towards your butt, keep your knee pointing down. Mm -hmm. Drag your arms up and in towards the back of your heart. Press that left, sorry, right heel up towards the ceiling just a little bit more. And then lift your chest forward and up towards your fingertips just a little bit. So that's sort of scorpion variation. So the knee should be pointing down, hips level with the floor. Good, one more breath, lift from the back of your heart, the back of your throat, little back bend. Good, and then release the back of the, uh, release the head, stretch your right leg to straight, and then step the right foot forward between the hands left. Good, drop the back knee, please. Use a blanket there if you'd like. Take both hands inside the front foot, do some circles with your hip. And if it's easier to do that with the knee lifted, the back knee lifted, you can certainly go for that. But with the knee down, what I'm looking for here is for you to get more into that full range of motion of your pelvis. When we have the back knee lifted, often we do a lot of kind of circling at the same level that our pelvis is in, but the pelvis itself doesn't get to change its orientation with the legs. So just notice here with the back knee on the floor that you can do more interesting things than when you have that back knee lifted. <laughs> interesting being a you know neutral word. <laughs> Good, you guys. It's all interesting. Good, slowly bring yourself back to stillness, please. Keep your hands on the floor, keep your back knee on the floor. Good, so if your back toes are not tucked, tuck them, so the ball of the foot is on the floor and your knee is still on the floor, just toes are turned under. Good, and I want you with your hands on the floor or blocks, again, if your hands can't comfortably reach, Press down through that back knee and drag forward so you feel the top of your left thigh and your butt lifting up. So take your butt slightly up and back. Yep, till the front of your back thigh feels soft. So take it as high as it needs to go until the front of your left thigh joint feels soft. So butt lifts up and back. Yep. And then scoop into your low belly again without moving your pelvis. Scoop into your belly. Start to rotate your tail down. So you're curling into your low back, even though your legs look like they're still in a low lunge. Good. Now maintain that and bring your pelvis forward only to the point where that left thigh does not get hard, keeping your hands on the floor or blocks. Nice. Good, you guys. Now go ahead with those back toes tucked, lift your back knee up off the floor, maintain that softness at the front of your left thigh. The minute you stretch so hard that your thigh becomes hard, you've gone too far. Right, so lift your butt up and back. Yep, get softer, squeeze your feet towards each other. That's where your real strength comes from. Good, scoop into your low belly. Still feel like that back foot is dragging forward. Nice, one more breath. Excellent, you guys. And then go ahead and step back downward facing dog. I know you were wondering where the heck that was all going. That was it. <laughs> you still have another side. Slide forward to plank pose, upward push up. Lower down slow, coming through knees first if you need. Good, rise up cobra, lift head, neck and chest, pointing the toes back behind you. Good, and then come back downward facing dog. So what are we working with, right? Tight hamstrings tend to be a positional thing with what our pelvis is doing. And sometimes with what the front of the pelvis is doing, so the hip flexors and all of that dictate what the hamstrings, back of the thigh, is able to do comfortably. Take your left leg up and back behind you, down dog split. Good, bend the knee, kick your heel in towards your butt, keep your knee pointing down. Good, and then start to lift that heel up higher towards the ceiling, noticing if you are arching your lower back to make that happen. If you are, draw up through your low rib cage, draw up through below your belly button, so you're supporting the front of the pelvis as you lift that thigh. 
drag the arms up and in, lift your chest slightly forward. So it's like you're looking towards the tips of your fingers. Good. You can imagine the heel will come to the back of the head one day. Good. Excellent, you guys. And then release the upper body, stretch your left leg to straight, and then step that foot forward between the hands, lunge. Good, drop the back knee, take both hands inside the front foot, circle your hip. Good, and again, try to get into that full range of motion, how the thigh interacts with the pelvic bones. Because this has so much to do with when our hamstrings get super, super tight or things get immobile is that the positions of the bones are actually keeping it so that nothing can change, right? That's what repetition does. So we do a lot of things, we tighten up one muscle group for whatever reason. And then we're like, oh, I guess I'm tight there forever. And this is what our mind does. It says, oh, this repeated twice, I guess it's true forever. Good, you guys. Slowly come back towards stillness, please. Good, back knee stays on the floor. Keep the hands where they are, but press into your back knee, tuck your back toes, and then lift your butt up and back enough so that you feel the front of your right thigh, your back thigh gets soft. So you don't have that hard pushing. Good. And then once you've got that, start to scoop into your low belly, maintain that. Good, keep the belly nice and scooped. And now start to bring the pelvis forward again without letting that front right thigh get hard. Good, so you have to actually work some of those deeper abdominal muscles, pelvic muscles, maintain space. Nice, you guys, you can lift your chest any amount here that feels good, excellent. And then back toes are tucked, just lift the back knee up off of the floor, maintain that softness at the front of the thigh. So you gotta lift your butt up and back here too. Good, take that pressure out of the front of the thigh. This also is gonna give you more room for the hamstrings. Good, kick that thigh up a little higher, lift your butt up and back, tilt your tailbone up and back. Like you're flaring the sit bones just a little bit. Nice, excellent, you guys. And then go ahead, step back, downward facing dog. Ay, ay, ay. Good, slide forward to plank pose, upward push up. Lower down slow, coming through knees if you need. Good, rise up cobra, lift head, neck and chest. Nice, and then exhale, release to your belly, please. Flip over onto your back. And if you have a block, you bend your knees, place the block underneath your sacrum in a supported bridge pose. If you do not have a block, you can come into bridge if you choose, or you can let the hips rest on the floor, constructive rest. Knees are bent in line with your heels. But so you're either coming into a supported bridge pose or bridge pose with no support, no block, or constructive rest where the pelvis is just resting on the floor. If you are in constructive rest, don't let your knees splay wide. Keep your knees and your ankles in a close to 90 degree angle with each other. And so some of you may have seen this before, but here's the poem. The name of it is Pretty Ugly. Sounds good, right? It says, I'm very ugly. So don't try to convince me that I am a very beautiful person because at the end of the day, I hate myself in every single way. And I'm not going to lie to myself by saying there is beauty inside of me that matters. So rest assured, I will remind myself that I am a worthless, terrible person. And nothing you say will make me believe I still deserve love. Because no matter what, I am not good enough to be loved and I am in no position to believe that. Beauty does exist with, uh, I am in no position to believe that beauty does exist within me. Because whenever I look in the mirror, I always think, am I as ugly as people say? Does that sound like your voice wrote that? A little bit, parts of it. Maybe, maybe not. So here's the trick to the poem, right? At the bottom of it says, now read from the bottom up. Am I as ugly as people say? Because whenever I look in the mirror, I always think beauty does exist within me. And I am in no position to believe that I am not good enough to be loved because no matter what, I still deserve love. And nothing you say will make me believe that I am a worthless, terrible person. So rest assured, I will remind myself there is beauty inside of me that matters. And I'm not going to lie to myself by saying I hate myself in every single way, because at the end of the day, I am a very beautiful person. So don't try to convince me that I'm very ugly. Isn't that wild? It is the exact same words, read from one direction to the other. 
And this is what I mean is that this internal dialogue looked at one way might seem to be creating a reality that feels a certain way, interpreted a certain way. But what would happen if you entered in at a slightly different angle? If you took those same words, those same desires that have created whatever feels painful and also realize that it is the same ingredients, the same ingredients inside of you that create splendor, that create joy, that create enlightenment, whatever our ex, uh, expectations of that are. So your inner dialogue may be speaking a certain way. But if we only see it through that repetition, through those eyes that say, this is what it is because this is what I decided it was the first time I heard it. And we miss out on the, on the fact that we are the artist and we, all, and we are the writer. And that those same ingredients can become a reality that is different, means something different. So if you are very, very high on your block, you might wanna come a little lower. But again, if you are one of those people that has that inner dialogue where you're like, yeah, it's mean in there. What if you read your own dialogue backwards? <laughs> Even better, the dialogue that is going on in the outside is often mirroring for us something that is so different and that internal voice is just not listening. But knowing that you can change how that dialogue is perceived, I think is very powerful. Still with your sacrum resting on the block, draw your right knee in towards your chest. If you have a strap and wanna use a strap, you can. Right knee in towards your chest, hold behind your thigh. Good, as you hold behind your thigh, I want you to actually bring your, uh, try to tilt your pelvis towards the floor. So it's like you're arching your lower back. So you want your groins rolling down towards the floor, away from your head, so towards your feet. Good, and then keep holding behind that thigh. And then extend your heel up towards the ceiling any amount, but keep your pelvis tilting yeah, towards your feet, towards the edge of the block. Good. Nice, you guys. Reach up through that right inner, uh, inner edge of the heel. You got it. And then bend the knee all the way back in towards your chest, squeeze, and then roll those groins back down towards the floor. Good. And then step that right foot down to the floor, release it. And try the other side, draw the left knee in towards your chest. Good, hold behind the thigh. Draw the groins or tilt the pelvis so that it is, uh, tailbone is rooting down towards the floor, tilting towards the floor, towards your heels. Good, so it's gonna feel like you're arching your lower, your lower spine. And then extend your left heel up towards the sky. Keep pressing your thigh against your hand so that again, you can work the pelvic alignment here, the pelvis tilt, less than you are focused on how straight you can get your leg. Good. Then feel the reach through the underside of the heel. I don't care what happens behind the knee. What matters is can you extend out from your calf? Good, really good, Lisa. Nice, Sue, nice, Laura. Good, Pam. Roll those groins down towards the floor. That's it. And then hug the knee back and towards your chest. Again, get into that little arch of the lower spine so your tail is rotating down away from your belly. Good, nice, Mark. Release that left foot down to the floor. Excellent, lift your hips up off of the block, place the block to the side. Mm -hmm. Pause for a moment, <laughs> pelvis just on the floor. Good. He said, watch how much your inner dialogue inserts itself into your practice. And then also remember that you are able to consciously insert into that dialogue a lot of affirmative feelings, affirmative thoughts, affirmative ideas. But if your inner dialogue has been around for a long time, it might feel like, oh, well, I got broken somewhere along the line and I guess it's unfixable. I'll just live with it. 
And the truth is you've never been broken. And even if you were, you are always fixable. So engaging with that dialogue in a loving way, not a dismissive way, is part of our practice. I hear you mean parts of me. I love you anyway. Go ahead, hug your right knee in towards your chest, please. Go ahead, extend the left leg straight down towards the floor, hugging the right knee in. And again, if that feels like it creates a lot of strain on the lower back, you can always bend the left knee again. Flex your left foot, press that heel all the way down. Good. Nice, you guys. And then press your shin back against your hand. So it's like you're pulling your thigh away from your belly and pressing again, tailbone down towards the floor. So it's gonna feel like that same little arc in your lower back. Good, nice. And now draw your rib cage in and get wide through the backs of your shoulders. That's it, nice. Now hold behind your thigh and extend that right heel up towards the ceiling. Press your thigh against your hands. Again, groins roll down towards the floor. Good, keep that left foot awake. Press down through the left heel, the top of the left thigh. Excellent. Good, you guys bend the knee again, back and towards your chest, come into a spinal twist, bringing the right knee across your body all the way over so that that knee finds the floor. Good, let that left shoulder come up off the floor as much as it wants to, stretch the left arm up alongside your ear. So don't worry about trying to get deeper into the twist, get into the length of your side body. So let that right knee come all the way down to the floor. You got it. Stretch the left arm up. Good. Breathe into the back of the rib cage. Breathe into the back of the sacrum. Good. And then slowly release, please. Coming back onto the back, hugging the right knee in. And then extend the right leg down to the floor. Good. Draw the left knee in towards your chest. You're actually, I kind of like this. So as you bring your left knee in, bend your right knee as well and plant that foot just for a second, just so you can remind yourself of the difference of what it feels like to hug your left knee in with your right knee bent, right? A little bit more space in your pelvis. Roll those groins down towards the floor. Good. Now keep the left knee in as you start to extend your right leg down to the floor. Just notice what starts to feel like it is restricted or what's tighter or what's less mobile. Good. Press your left shin against your hand. So again, the belly moves in and down towards the spine. Your thigh moves away from your belly. Good. Tailbone rolls down towards the floor. Nice. Relax your shoulders. Your shoulders can't help you here. <laughs> How did you know? How did I know? I live in a human body too. <clears throat> Good, and then release that, please. Hold behind the thigh, extend the left heel up towards the sky. And it is generally the case in these human bodies that when we feel vulnerable in one part of our body for whatever reason, is we try our best to make up for that by over-engaging where we feel stronger, what feels accessible. So especially in the lower body, when things are very tight, that also translates to us as weakness, right? If muscles are tight, they're not very available. So we feel actually insecure in the lower legs or in the lower body. So what do we do? We tighten up higher up because that's what's available. We feel insecure inside. Instead of trying to empower those parts, what do we do? We tighten up somewhere else and get mean. Press that thigh against the hands, draw the tailbone down towards the floor. And that's not always the case. Of course, if I'm you know, saying stuff that doesn't make sense in your internal world, then leave it to the side. Hug that left knee back in towards your chest. Good, take it over to the right for spinal twist. Let that left shin come all the way to the floor, knee all the way to the floor, and stretch the right arm up alongside your ear. Good, so there's no worry about that right, uh, sorry, about your left shoulder trying to find the floor. None at all. I think I said right arm up over the ear, but left arm up. There you go. <laughs> Nice, you guys. Idea is to breathe really long from your outer armpit all the way down to your hip. Allow the twist to happen through the body as it's going to while the knee is anchored to the floor. Mm. 
Nice, you guys. One more breath, breathing into as much as you can, the back of the body, not just the front. And then start to unwind yourself, bringing, the, bringing yourself back onto your back, left knee in towards your chest. Good, and then bring the right knee in as well. So squeeze in, beautiful. Roll forward and back on your spine. Forward and back, forward and back, forward and back. Good, bring yourself up to balance on your sit bones, coming into boat pose. I know you're facing the back of your mat, that's all right. Good, lifting up as tall as you can through your seat. Good, draw the arm bones back and in. So it's like you're drawing your uh, shoulders into the back of your heart to lift your chest, scoop and hollow your low navel. And now lift your chest even higher, press through the top of your head. Keep the knees bent because I really want you to get into this feeling of lifting through your pelvis, right? We think the only way to stretch the hamstrings is by keeping the legs super, super straight. Pressure comes out of the hamstrings with the knees bent and then you can stretch where they attach at the spine. One more breath. Good, and then come all the way up to sit. Don't roll backwards. <laughs> Good, and for most of you in the room with me is now you are facing the wall beautifully. So go ahead and stretch your legs out in front of you so that your feet are flat up against the wall. If you're at home and you don't have a wall, sorry, if you do have a wall, press yourself up to where you can sit with your legs straight, feet up against the wall. Good, and if you don't have a wall, but you have like a strap that you can use to simulate a little bit of pressure there, you can do that. So legs are straight, yep, good. So here you should feel as though you're able to kind of push your feet into the wall, heels and balls of the feet, nice. But if your lower back tends to round under, or you feel like you're sitting towards the back end of your tailbone or it's curling under, use a blanket underneath your seat. It's still a good idea. Good. Just remembering that hamstring stretching has a lot to do with the angle of your pelvis. It is less about straightening your knees. It is more about getting your pelvis into a place where it is able to be vertical without strain. So make sure you can still push your feet against the wall. Good. Inhale the arms up alongside your ears once you're there. Good. Pressing your feet into the wall. Start to bow forward, letting your hands come either to the wall if they can, or resting on the floor wherever they rest if reaching the wall does not work. If reaching the wall does work, keep your hands right about where they are about shoulder height. Good, yep, push your feet into the wall, push into your hands, good. Round into your back just a little bit. Nice, let your knees pop up slightly, yep. And now start to lift your chest forward and up at an angle, like you're gonna bring your collarbones to the wall. So let your knees stay bent, keep your heels rooting down, balls of the feet pushing into the wall, pushing the hands into the wall, and now lift your chest, lengthen the spine. Good. Nice, nice, nice. Imagine yourself, imagine yourself wiggling your sit bones back if you want your legs to come straighter. So you're not pushing your knees down, you're drawing your butt back tilting your pelvic bones towards your thighs, front of the pelvis bones towards the thighs, tailbone back. Good, one more breath, really lengthen your spine, reach from the bottom of your torso, top of your waist. Good, and then slowly release, walk your hands back. Nice job, keep your left foot up against the wall, bend your right knee, bring the bottom of the foot to the inside of your left thigh, let your knee go wide. So it's Janu Shirshasana, but you're keeping your left foot up against the wall. Good. And this is to remind you of what it is to keep your toes, your foot in neutral alignment. So most of us have a tendency that in any of these positions, the foot either turns in or turns out. So here you got to keep that foot right where it is. Good. Nice, you guys. Inhale the arms up alongside your ears. Do a little twist of your belly towards the left over that left leg and then bow forward again. Good. Remembering that pressing your heel towards the wall and down into the floor and letting your knee become a little bit bent is a good thing. And then take your butt back more. So you're really working that angle. Like you're trying to take the front of your pelvis and tip it forward, right? Sometimes we use that image of the bowl of the pelvis like a bowl of water, right? So as though you wanna spill that water forward onto the floor. So your butt's gotta go back, good. And then keep that knee bent because that's going to move the, the sensation of stretch much more into that upper attachment of the hamstring where it attaches up in your spine. You can fight with the attachment at your knee all you want. Your knee is going to win. Meaning that if you pull it too hard, you're gonna end up with a hurt knee. 
Work your hamstrings from your spine, from your back. Good. Twist just a little bit deeper, please. Turning your belly a little bit more, bringing the right hand to the outer edge of the foot if you'd like. For some of you, you can press your forearm up against the shin and maybe take your left hand either to your lower back and twist open even more or taking the left arm up to the sky or over your ear, reaching for your toes if you're reaching over. Good, so it's like a little twisted arm position if you're reaching that way. Nice, Lena. Nice, Mark. Good, you guys. Keep your chest up. Nice, Laura. Good, and then slowly unwind, come up, back up to center. Nice job. Stretch your right leg forward in front of you so the right foot finds the wall. Good, and then bend your left knee in towards your chest, let it drop wide, bottom of the left foot into the inside of the right leg. Check out that your right toes are straight up and down. So it doesn't really work if you're like, oh, my foot's against the wall, but my foot is turned out. Move it forward and up. There you go. Inhale the arms to the sky. Little twist to your right. So you're turning at the waist towards that extended leg and then bow forward. Remembering that pushing your foot towards the wall and down into the floor and allowing the back of your knee to get softer is what you want. Good, so all of the stretching of the leg here, if your leg is getting straighter, it's because your butt is moving back or the front of your pelvic bones are tipping forward. Nice. And again, interesting to watch the inner dialogue when that might be easier or harder to do. And what your habitual reaction is to things that you find hard to do or that don't seem to be working easily for you right away. Because in any of these moments, and this is a great deal of our practice, in any of these moments, we're able to relax around what is there. We don't have to grip because there's a mean thought. We don't have to grip and go, oh my gosh, because of whatever passes through our mind. We can go, oh, okay, I hear you. And also loving kindness and also patience for myself. And also respect for the me that is really giving everything I've got. And beautiful to acknowledge that if you feel like oh, I'm not giving everything that I got, okay, you don't have to. You're not required to. <laughs> you don't wanna leave this life empty. Funny way to put it because yoga says, yes, we want to become empty. <laughs> Twist a little deeper, please. Taking the hand to the outside of the right leg. You don't want to live in an exhausted state. Put it that way. Good. Right hand can come to the lower back or stretching the arm up alongside the ear, maybe even reaching all the way over towards that extended leg if you'd like. A little twisted arm position looking underneath the right armpit. Like that, Laura, using the wall. Good. And then slowly release, come all the way back up. Excellent. So bend both knees, <laughs> stay close to your wall. Uh, carefully come forward onto hands and knees so that you are facing the wall, come into downward facing dog. I say carefully because if you just roll over your feet, you might bonk your head into the wall, some of you. So come into hands and knees facing the wall, downward facing dog. You still wanna be fairly close to the back of your mat though. So pretty close to the wall. Good, take your right leg up and back behind you, down dog split. And then bring that right knee forward and through for pigeon. I want you to be able to bring your hands to the wall in pigeon. So as you come mm -hmm. forward and you start to set that, that shin, you might have to scoot yourself forward even more so that you are able to lift your hands up to the wall in your pigeon pose and be fairly vertical. I don't want you to be super, super leaning. So Jess, I would come towards the wall just a little bit more. Good, good, Lynn, nice. Yeah, really, if you want to really challenge yourself, get closer to the wall. <laughs> Is that what you do? Is that what you do? You get no, close to the wall? To, get, to, to, to make it really challenging? Get close to the wall? Yeah. Well, you'll see. Yeah, so find, find your pigeon pose. Good. And then walk your hands up the wall. You can give yourself a moment here to, to sort of hang, but press into that right shin a lot. And then if you're hanging, notice how much you are now dropping into that hyperextension through your elbows. This is the same thing as what your thighs do, right? Is they get super hard because we're just dropping all of our weight into the joint. So push into your hands, pull your rib cage up and in so that that hardness around the front of your armpit gets softer. And now as you're pressing into that right shin, scoop into your low belly, lift your belly up off of that thigh, press into your back knee. And again, feel like you're lifting your butt slightly up and back. I know I'm making you really work your legs. Tucking the back toes can be nice. 
Uh, so you're pushing into the wall, getting a little bit more rounded in your back. Instead of falling all the way forward in pigeon, you're getting rounded. Nice, press into that back knee. Don't let that left thigh get hard. Good, one more breath. Nice, and then walk your hands down the wall, back onto the floor, downward facing dog. <laughs> I'm not sure if that looks comfortable or not, Lindsay. Are you just stuck? <laughs> okay. <laughs> downward facing dog, of course you are. It's your favorite. It's a special spot in your back that just collapses. All right, pedal your feet a little bit, wiggle your butt. Shake out your sillies. And then second side, left leg comes up and back, down dog split. And then bring that knee forward and wide, find pigeon on the other side, again, close enough to the wall. So get as, really as close as you kind of can, because while it might feel good to get into that real like hang through your arms, it'll feel good for a couple of breaths, absolutely. But the idea is for the wall to be support for your spine to stay vertical, for you to get more vertical. Good, and blocks are great, Kristen, what you're doing there totally works. Good. So walk your hands up the wall, please, at least shoulder height. And then if you want to give yourself that hanging sensation for a breath or two, go for it. Let yourself really feel, ah, oh, there's the front of my armpit stretching. There's my chest stretching. Yeah. Just realize that it's a little bit like yanking on rubber bands. If you stay there for long enough, it's just going to start to feel like something's tearing. So press into your hands before that happens. <laughs> start to pull your rib cage back and in. Press into that front shin, press down through your back knee and feel like you're trying to lift your butt up and back towards your back heel. So you're able to get more vertical through your torso. The goal here is not to be folding forward. The goal is to be using the wall to support vertical. You're like, darn, I don't like this anymore. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, you got to press down into your left shin a little bit more and rotate your right hip forward. To tell my hips that. Uh -huh. Good, you guys. Really press down through the legs. Feel yourself lifting your hip points up off of your thigh, dropping your tail. Your butt might have come away from the floor. That's exactly what should happen. Good. And then go ahead and walk the hands back down. Nice job. Good head. Come back into downward facing dog, facing the wall. <laughs> All the sass out. <laughs> Pedal your feet. <laughs> I also live in a human body and human mind. I know when the sass is rising. Good. And then step your left foot between the hands, please. Lunge. Good. Walk your hands towards the inside of that foot. Walk to your right until you come to the center of your mat. Turn your toes. Prasarita Padottanasana. Ah, not so bad. Let your weight fall towards the balls of your feet. Nice. And then turn your right toes out 45 degrees. Bend your knee. Again, letting that knee move towards the second or third toe, adjusting the foot if necessary. Good, keep your hands center. And then again, scoop into your low belly, start to drop your tailbone down towards the floor as you lift your front hip bones up, lift your chest up a little higher. And then for those of you who feel like you want to go there, start to come up on your left heel, turn your left toes, rotate them up towards the ceiling, keep dropping your tail down towards the floor. Good, lifting your pelvic bones up. So you're scooping into your belly, dropping your butt, like you're trying to get into vertical where you can stack your shoulders over your hips. So it's a much deeper side lunge. Good, so your knee's gonna go beyond your ankle in that position. Good, Linda, just watch that knee, right knee pushes wide. Yep, good, you guys. Beautiful, and then slowly release, come all the way back to center. Nice, Tina, and back that, turn your toes. Good, and then turn your left toes out 45 degrees, bend the knee, start to move into that side lunge. And again, if your knee can barely get in line with your ankle, your stance might be a little too wide. You can always bring your feet slightly closer. Good. Scoop into your low belly, start to drop your tail as you lift your hip points up. Good, keep your left knee pointing towards second or third toe. So that inner knee has got to push wide. And then if it feels like it's appropriate, turn your right toes up towards the ceiling, rotating that thigh so you're up on your right heel. And then you can drop your butt even lower towards the floor, but continue to lift your hip bones up, tailbone drops. So getting as vertical as you can through your pelvis. Nice, Lindsay. Good, nice Lena. Excellent, you guys. And then slowly come back up to center, turning the toes. Good job, walk yourself towards the top of your mat, turn the right toes forward, spin your left heel up, 
Good. Drop the back knee. Use a blanket underneath that knee if you'd like. Anjaneyasana. You are correct. <laughs> Sounds like I'm becoming predictable, which means I have to start doing really ludicrous things so that you don't know what's coming next. You are in trouble now. Good. Deep breath in. Good. Just shorten your stance a tiny bit. There you go. Because now you can let your knee come forward more, your pelvis forward more. Excellent, you guys. Take one more deep breath. Good. Release the hands down to the floor, please. If you have blocks, two blocks, use them underneath each hand. If you have them. If you don't, just have your hands on either side of your front foot. You'll do your best. Good. Nice, you guys. So move your butt back in space just a little bit. Start to wiggle that right heel forward towards Hanuman. <laughs> so wiggle your right foot forward, starting to straighten the front leg. Good. Come up on that front heel. And then push through the ball of your foot. So you don't have a fully flexed foot. You have a uh, gas pedal foot, right? Pressing out through the ball of the foot or a high heel foot, whichever one makes more sense to you, like the Barbie foot. Good. Now blocks underneath your hands close to your hips. So move your blocks back, Jess. Move your blocks back, Lynn. Good. Tuck your back toes, lift your back knee up. So you're in Hanuman, but both knees are off the floor. Your back knee is off the floor. Good. I don't mind if your front knee is bent. Really don't. But I want you to squeeze your feet towards each other. Lift your butt up and back. Again, trying to tilt your pelvis, angle it forward first. And then with that scoop in the belly, drop your tail, start to lift your hip bones up, looking for almost a vertical pelvis. Good, just squeeze your feet towards each other. Yes, like you're pulling the thigh bones up and in. Beautiful, and then any amount, let your legs go to what feels like straight to you. Aha, and then go ahead, release that back knee down to the floor. Nice, Pam. Good, slide that left heel back into the lunge and come back to downward facing dog. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I did say to prepare for Hanuman. You did. I did. I want to say I've never lied to you, but I don't know if that's true. <laughs> I wouldn't want to lie to you as I tell you I've never lied to you. Left leg up and back behind you, please. Good. Step that foot forward between the hands. Anjaneyasana, drop the back knee. Again, blocks underneath the hands are great, but first take the arms up to the sky. I realize give you the full pose first. Anjaneyasana. Notice here, if again, your tendency is to let all of your weight fall forward into your back thigh. So you're, if the front of your right thigh feels really hard here, stuck. Then you gotta lift your butt up and back. Again, draw into those low abdominals, get a little bit more of that lift through your pelvis. And then you bring the whole thing forward, not push forward through your thigh, but the whole thing moves forward. And then your chest lifts up and your heart opens nice and high because this is Hanuman's mother's pose the mother of devotion. Hanuman is the one that knows all of your heart secrets. Good. And then release the hands down to the floor. Really nice, you guys. Use blocks underneath the hands if you would like. Start to move your hips back just a little bit so that you can start to straighten your left leg, come up on the ball, sorry, on the heel of the foot. Good. And then don't do a full hard flex. So as you curl those toes up, push through the, through the ball of the foot so that there's a different engagement on the back of the leg. And then start to tuck your back toes, lift your back knee. So you're in Hanuman, but you are Hanuman far away from the floor. You are flying through the air. <laughs> Front knee can be bent. Good. Nice, you guys. Heart lifts nice and high. Scoop into your low belly. Again, dropping the tail, lifting the hip bones up. But then simultaneously knowing that it might feel actually better to tilt the pelvis forward and just really get your tail up and back. It's the first step, right? So notice where it feels like your pelvis gets a really exciting moment of, oh, I never, I never go that way. And if both of that is true, then just pick one. <laughs> if your pelvis is like, I never do either of these. Squeeze your feet. Imagine here that you could hold this position with your arms up in the sky. <laughs> I said, imagine. If you wanna go for it, go for it. <laughs> nice, Lindsay. Good. And then slowly release, please. Back knee comes down to the floor. Slide your left heel in enough to come to a lunge and then step back to downward facing dog. Ay, ay, ay. Pedal your feet. And then again, bend both knees a lot. Let the knees hover just above the floor. 
pull your butt back. Like you're going to take your butt down to your heels, keep scooping into your low belly. The whole point here is to just get the knees pulling forward as your butt is pulling back. So those thigh creases get deeper. Good. Nice, you guys. And then again, scoop the belly, pull the hips to the sky, let your heels soften towards the floor. Keep your knees just gently out of that locked position. Your shins move forward. Good, and then release the knees all the way down to the floor, please child's pose, let your knees go wide. Maybe not as wide as usual though. Maybe a little narrower than usual. Let your hips drop back to your heels. because at the end of the day, I am a very beautiful person. So don't try to convince me that I'm very ugly. Don't try to convince me that the inner dialogue of my mind that is trying to interpret a world that is too big for it to fathom, and that it doesn't always have the right answers or tools and it's doing the best that it can. Don't try to convince me that that's the truth, the limitations of what I am. It's the practice of yoga is to be able to observe that inner dialogue and to see it as the Maya, that veil of illusion. It says perhaps this is a piece of the world that we've internalized, but it's not the full reality. Maybe we're, be able, we're able to see between the lines between the words. What is that inner voice really trying to say? And that's what we practice for. That's why we meditate is to listen for what is that inner voice really trying to say? And slowly walk yourself all the way back up, please. Nice job. <laughs> Good, take your feet out in front of you. Come onto your butt. Feet out in front of you. Good, scoot towards the front of your mat. So you've got space behind you. Good, and then bend your knees, please. Again, scooting towards the front of your mat. Bend your knees, plant your feet as wide as your mat. And then let your knees drop to the right, both knees. And then walk your torso around same direction until you face the back of your mat coming onto your forearm. So it's a little supported twist. If you have a bolster or a blanket or a pillow nearby that you wanna just shove underneath you, <laughs> you can. If not, then just staying up on your forearms is nice. You can come low enough where you can really rest the forehead on the arms, the elbows can go wide, lots of options. Not entirely sure where you're at, Lauren. It looks like you're doing something maybe different, or maybe I just can't see. Yeah, so drop your knees all the way to the right. Yeah, like a twist. And then your belly should be almost facing the floor. So you're like really twisting the full opposite direction. There you go. I am in no position to believe that I am not good enough to be loved. Isn't that the truth? Having no concept of our own worth, we are very willing to judge it to be far less than it is. So that inner dialogue is a place where we can see the reflection of maybe what we've been told. We can see the reflection of the places that we have learned to interpret as strength or weakness, good and bad. 
And we can see that they exist together as one whole. So there's a place to insert into that dialogue, love, acceptance, compassion, patience, courage, contentment, pick what suits you. To recognize that that internal dialogue, though it feels like it is fundamental to who we are is part of the illusion. You are the painter, you are the artist, you are the writer. You don't have to subtract anything, but keep adding. Keep adding brilliance until you see yourself as brilliance. And keep adding love until you see yourself as love. Slowly walk yourself all the way back up. Coming back to face the top of your mat. Right, give yourself a moment before you switch to the other side. Again, starting with the feet as wide as your mat is the suggestion. If that feels like it's too much, and when you come into the twist, you can always adjust. Let your knees drop to the left, and then start to walk yourself around, same direction until, again, your torso faces the back of your mat. And either your side waist or your belly can either drop down onto a prop if you have one, or you can be resting on your forearms facing the back of the mat. sound of Om, it said that there are three distinct sounds. The fourth sound is silence. And when you are expressing the sound of Om, of course, you believe that you are beginning from the ah, the O, oh, ending with the mm, and then silence, the fourth, so it must be the last sound. The silence was there before you began the Om. So is it the fourth sound or the first sound? Is it both the underlying reality that is beyond just your expression outward or your interpretation inward? There's that fundamental layer that is not either of those. And so yoga says our basic ignorance is that we think, we think, and therefore we believe that we are our thoughts. That inner dialogue becomes the prison that we live in. Sometimes friend, sometimes enemy. And what if that dialogue could be interjected with something that was more fundamentally true? You are the artist. You are the one holding the paintbrush. You are the writer holding the pen. You are the sculptor with your hands in the clay. The classic image says you are the dancer, the one that dances this dance of creation, sustaining, dissolving. And that space that is at the end and the beginning holds all of that. So we think that we are the victim of, or that we are st 
stuck in whatever that inner dialogue has become. When it is yours to make into either that poem that says very clearly, I am sure that I am ugly and you cannot convince me otherwise. Or it can be the poem that says, I don't think that that's true at all and you can't convince me otherwise. So notice your inner dialogue and then listen deeper to what are those voices really trying to say? And what would you say to those voices knowing that they are you instead of shut up, go away? <laughs> What would you say to yourself? Your last breath on this side and start to walk yourself all the way back up. Coming back to face the top of your mat, giving yourself a moment Bring your feet together, let your knees drop wide. Let yourself just fold forward into a lazy Baddha Konasana. So if you wanna have a longer diamond on your legs, do that. And I say lazy because I don't want you to try very hard here. I just want you to lean forward, let the legs splay wide. Keep your feet just a little bit awake. Relax your shoulders, relax your jaw. Whatever the pose feels like it's easy or it's not easy, let yourself be in a place where you don't hate it. This breathing and the possibility that you can feel anything and everything that is inside of you. You don't have to hate it. And then as you're ready, slowly unwind. If you're in the room with me, turn yourself around so that your head space the center of the room. Come onto your backs. At home, you can face any direction you want. losing my light. Good. Your knee is bent. Bring your knees in towards your chest. Just scoot your hips over to the left, please. Drop your knees to the right. One more spinal twist, just getting your pelvic bones again to be in line with each other. Yeah, really keep the knees stacked. So let your hips rotate as much as they need to, letting your shoulder fly up if it needs to. Good. And then come back towards center, please. Scoot your hips over to the left, drop your knees to the right, twist the other way. Nice. And then as you come back to center, you can pause for a moment, squeeze your knees in towards your chest, forehead up to meet your knees. And then slowly release, extending the legs out, maybe taking a rolled blanket underneath your knees if the hamstrings are a cranky place. broad definition of beauty in spiritual terms is not what we would generally call pretty or what we would call symmetrical. This beauty is seeing something for everything that it is. The death is beautiful. All aspects of life are beautiful. Your anger is beautiful. Your sadness is beautiful. Your fear is beautiful but we only experience it that way when we feel it as everything that it is. We don't cut it off, we don't cut ourselves off. So breathe yourself very wide.
very gently let your breath begin to deepen. Let your body stretch and move in whatever ways serve it well. And as you're ready, draw your knees in towards your chest and roll to your right side. Take a moment before you begin to push the floor away. Come back to an upright seated position. Hands together at the heart center. So rest assured, I will remind myself there is beauty inside of me that matters. I'm not going to lie to myself by saying that I hate myself in every single way, because at the end of the day, I am a very beautiful person. So don't try to convince me that I'm very ugly. Remind yourself daily, breath by breath, that experiencing your whole self is what is that experience of beauty. So hold nothing back. We'll close with the sound of Om, deep breath in. Sliding the thumbs up to the space between the eyebrows. Namaste. Thank you guys so, so much. Have a great rest of your night, a great rest of your week until I see you again. Please do check out the details on the website if you're interested. Rachel is teaching a pranayam workshop this Sunday. And then um, coming up also, Angela has a kirtan coming up. And uh, there's some, Neil has a workshop on Shiva coming up for Shivaratri at the end of the month. So take a look, details are all up on the website and you should be getting emails and all that stuff. See you guys soon. Thanks. Thanks. Welcome. Thank you.